Welcome back to Logic 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on the rule of inference known as disjunctive syllogism. It actually has many other names. Some call it disjunctive elimination. Others simplify that name to just elimination by itself. Others make this way more complicated by using the Latin expression modus tolendo ponens. And if I've done the translation on my own properly, that means the way that affirms by denying. But we're sticking with the name disjunctive syllogism. For this to work, we need two premises. First, we need a disjunction, P or Q. Hence the name disjunctive syllogism, disjunction, disjunctive, got it. And as always, P and Q can either be simple sentences or compound expressions, doesn't matter. And the second premise that we need is we need the negation of one of the two elements in the disjunction. So here that's not P. And if we have those two things, we can conclude that the other half of the disjunction is true, so Q. So to recap, disjunctive syllogism tells us if we have P or Q and not P, then therefore Q. To understand how this works might help to see an example, but this is very straightforward. Imagine that the first premise was the food has chicken or beef, and the second premise was the food does not have beef. And if those two things are true, we can conclude that the food must have chicken. The reason for this is that the disjunction tells us that at least one of those two things must be true. It must be the case that the food has chicken, or the food has beef, or the food has both. But if we know that the food doesn't have one of those two things, by virtue of the fact that it must have at least one of those two, if it doesn't have one thing, then it must have the other thing. So if it doesn't have beef, it must have chicken. We can prove that this is true logically, both using a truth table and by relying on our old friend modus ponens. Let's start off by using the truth table to prove that this is true. So here we have a truth table with four columns. We had two simple sentences, P and Q, and then we had our two premises to disjunctive syllogism, not P, and P or Q. So if we highlight where our premises are true, starting with P or Q, we see that P or Q is true in the first three rows. And if we look at our second premise, we see that not P is true in the bottom two rows. Notice that not P and P or Q overlap in their truth values in just the third row. And if we look at the third row where Q is in the Q column, we see that Q is in fact true, which is exactly what disjunctive syllogism told us. So if not P is true and P or Q is true, it must be the case that Q is true as well. And again, we can prove this by using modus ponens, just how we used modus ponens to prove that modus tollens was true. So we can look at this as a mini proof. So remember that disjunctive syllogism gave us two premises, P or Q and not P. And recall back to our replacement rules, we know that we can rewrite disjunctions as implications. So if we do that, if we take line one and write that as an implication, using material implication, we get not P implies Q. So we just negate one of those two and we get an implication with that. Well, now that we have this implication, you'll notice that line two tells us that the antecedent of the implication is true. The implication is not P implies Q, and we actually know that not P is true. And so if we apply modus ponens to that, using lines two and three, we get that the consequent of the implication must be true as well. Q must be true. And that is exactly what we saw with disjunctive syllogism. So that's disjunctive syllogism for you. And I'll see you next time when we talk about more rules of inference. Join me then.